Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to have a go at painting some abstract pink tulips using a wet in wet, very direct method which is quite meditative and should bring you to a tranquil place. So let's get started. So I have stretched a piece of paper here using the adhesive tape method of stretching which I've shown you how to do in another video. And I've done that so that I've got a nice flat surface to paint on because I am going to use quite a lot of water in this painting. And if you just tape it down with masking tape or even not at all, um, the water would make the whole painting completely uncontrollable. So it's quite important to either paint on a very heavy piece of paper, 600 grams or more, or else more economically you can stretch your paper like this. So that's what I've done. And now I'm just sketching in the flowers um, sketching in the, the tulips and the stems and the leaves and fortunately tulips are one of those flowers which are quite simple to draw they're just basically an oval shape with a kind of opening near the top and since this is going to be wet in wet and verging on the abstract I wouldn't say completely abstract because you can still tell that they're flowers um, unlike in some Picassos uh, but anyway we're not going to be aspiring to anything quite so lofty and uh, so we're just drawing some ovals and some nice stems and some leaves and setting up a good composition there before we start to paint using light pencil. I'm not going to paint these in any detail whatsoever. This is going to be a wet in wet splasherama. I don't know how this paper is going to work out either. I've, I've actually stretched this paper so it should be well behaved. So keep your fingers crossed for me. And I just discovered that my Isabay squirrel mop brush, this piece of work here, is um, now, if you want to buy one of these, you can. They're on Amazon. They're made in France, made from squirrel hair. Gray squirrel, I think this one is. Um, I don't think this one was as expensive, but they have gone up a lot. So looking at it, I'm thinking I should use it, shouldn't I? since I'm lucky enough to have it, so why not use it? So here we go, I'm wetting the whole of the paper and quite generously. And then once that's wet, I'll just let that sit for a minute so that the shine will go off. You have to kind of get down at it and look at it from the side to make sure you've covered all of it. Mm quite sure. I don't suppose that's any use to you. It's not much use to me either. I can't see. It's soaked in like crazy so I don't think I'm going to wait very long before I start painting on that. This is a crazy brush look. It's um quite good for painting poppies if you want to do them in a random sort of way because it's got this well it's not exactly well behaved is it it's not quite a Princeton snap brush is it no it doesn't have much snap in it that doesn't look <laughs> so okay if you want to waste a nice lot of paint the thing to do is to use one of these brushes so let's take some pinks That's Potter's Pink, and this is, uh, just a sec, this is Permanent Rose. And a little bit of um, I haven't got enough space here. It's the trouble, when you start to paint with a bigger brush, you suddenly run out of space. Um, that's uh, cobalt blue. And I'm going to drop in some quinacridone gold up here. And then a bit more cobalt on this side. 
mix with the quinacridone. And then let's have some more pink. I'm going to make the quinacridone a little bit softer. And just drop in the tulips. I had one down there too, didn't I? Was there one up there? I'm not sure it needs one there. Okay, and then a bit more blue. With the green for the leaves and stems. Back to the pink again, I'm just going to add a little bit because it always dries much, much lighter than you hope for. And now this is the point at which we let it dry. And we'll come back soon to finish it. Okay, so the painting has completely dried now. I left it overnight to make sure that it was completely dry and I'm pleased to see that the paper has flattened back down again because it had lifted slightly with the amount of water that I'd put, especially in the middle. Um, but because it's taped down securely and I stretched this paper before I started, it's actually behaved really well. Although it's quite a, a thin paper, I'm not sure if it's actually even 140 pounds. So that's a a bit of a win situation. Now I painted that part of the painting with my very large is a bay squirrel mop brush this one here which is a size 12, uh, 10 sorry and uh, now I'm going to come in with the second layer and hopefully the final layer of this painting and I'm going to be using a similar brush but a smaller one. Um, this is a 10 and I suppose I can't read what it says on there actually anymore but I imagine it's about a 6. And I'm going to try to paint this, um, finish this painting off in a very simple way because it's got a, a nice light feel to it and I don't want to put too many details in. So I'm going to restrict myself to the three colours that I started with, which was the quinac quinacridone gold. Um, this is uh, Scheveningen rose, which is the same as permanent rose or quinacridone rose and cobalt blue. These are the three colours with which I have made this painting so far and um, if you look here you'll see that the blue has blended into the pink and given some nice greys and violets there and over here the blue has blended into the quinacridone gold and given us some lovely greens. So when I come in with the next layer I'm going to stick with those colours. I won't be putting any pink over here because if I do that I'll start to get greys and browns and I won't be putting any yellow over here because if I do that I'll start to get greys and browns and so then that whole painting would become more dull, duller and that's not what we want so I'll be putting more blue and yellow in this side and more blue and pink in this side and a few touches up there as well and what I have to do now is just um, firm up the shapes a little bit so that instead of just being literally loose blobs um, these become a little bit more like tulips but I'm not going to um, make any attempt to 
create a realistic tulip. This is just literally the impression of. And here we're going to have the leaves of the tulips and in my memory anyway, I'm painting this more or less from memory, tulips are um, have uh, long, uh, let's say, sword shaped leaves pretty much and they tend to have a bluish tint to them I think usually. They're green but they are on the blue side. So before I actually put brush to paper, which is always a bit nerve-wracking, I've done a few um, practice strokes with this brush and what I'm doing is I've got my paint here in its little dishes and I'm going to um, mix up puddles of colour on the big palette. I've cleaned this palette specially so I've got plenty of mixing space. And then I'll be picking up the colour from here and then applying it hopefully directly and in one stroke to the painting. So here I've got some yellow and some blue and obviously that's going to mix to make green. So I will be picking up the greenish colour and then trying to do leaf shapes like that over the top of what we've already got there. And uh, so let's give it a try. I can use the same colour for the stems as well. Now bearing in mind what I said about not putting the yellow over this side, I'm going to uh, clean my brush now and um, change to a different mixture. So I'm going to put blue on my palette. Oops. Blue there. And then pink. And then I'm going to do a few leaves over this side, which will be more of a, a bluish tone. We'll see what happens when that dries because it always dries lighter than you expect and then a little bit of the pink for the flowers and this kind of painting can be quite um, meditative I suppose. If you're in a hurry it's not the kind of painting to do because now we're going to have to let it dry and come back and see where we've where we've got to before we do anything else. Just take out those hard lines there. Okay, time for tea. So here's the final painting if you go to my website at dianeanton.com, there's lots of things to discover there. So hopefully you'll pop along there. And in the description below this video, you'll find more information and affiliate links if you want to buy any of the materials that I recommend. That helps us a lot by giving us a very small commission at no extra cost to you. So I will say bye-bye for now and see you again soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.